So when you say culture, that could mean a lot of things to a lot of people. What do you mean by culture? And separately, who owns the vision for culture and the execution of culture in a business? Yeah, fair, fair questions. Let's let's start with the first one first. My definition is of culture is really core values plus behaviors, right? And there's other things that go into it, like you know your habits and your rituals and your legacy and your history and and those and and the norms and the and those kinds of things. But but it really is around your core values and the behaviors that are that are accepted acceptable or accepted as a result of of those core values. Really having them defined and really having them shape how you do business, how you interact with each other, how you design policies, how you define your processes, you know, those kinds of things. So how do you, how you make decisions? They're really at the heart of all of that. So, so that's, that's what culture is like to me or is defined is a definition for me is, is core values plus behaviors and really making sure that you take the time to, to, to define or, or to identify the core values that are important to you and to your business for somebody who's, you know, starting out with a business, uh, starting a new business, and then making sure you, you define what those core values mean so that there's never any question of what it means to do the right thing. Right. Um, who owns it? I, I, I truly believe that the CEO defines it, owns it, you know, it is the role model for it. But then ultimately we've also got to get that, what I call a grassroots groundswell, right? Like the, the CEO sets it, but, and the executives follow along and they are all aligned on what that culture looks like. But then there's this grassroots groundswell of employees who, who adopt it and are um, reinforced and, and recognized and encouraged to live um, those core values and live that culture. So it, it really is something that is set at the top and is owned at the top until ultimately the, the, the employees take over. But there's this great saying out there that, you know, you get the culture that you design or the one you allow. And again, that's something that, you know, comes from the top there. I, I, I'm going to get this wrong, but it's something like, you know, your, your culture is like the, the, worst behavior that you allow kind of thing. Right. So if you allow people to, you know, be reckless with how they interact with customers and how they interact with each other, you know, those kinds of things, that's your culture. That's what it's going to be. That's going to be okay. You know, if, if you have a culture where, you know, there's recourse for everything that employees say or feedback that they're given or, or customers aren't trusted, that's, you know, what it's going to be because you're allowing that behavior. But if you go in and you define it and you set it and you model it and you reinforce it, you're going to get the one that you've designed. So it's a, it's an ongoing process. It's not something that you can just define and then let it go. It's, it's one of those things that is, you know, you get to work at it every day. 